All right, what's up guys? So in this video, I'm going to go over how you can code faster using AI code editor. So the code editor that I like and I highly recommend is called Cursor. And basically the main benefit of Cursor is that you can chat with your code in the editor and then you can also make changes really fast. I'm gonna do a live demo of how you can use Cursor to do um, front end really fast. I'll probably do another video on back end development, but for this video, I'm just gonna do front end development and show you guys all the tips and tricks that hopefully you can use um, in your own projects. By the end of the video, you'll probably code at least two or three times faster. What I'm going to do in this video is I'm going to make changes to the front end of my current app, Explore Insights. So this is the front end and right now it's a bit ugly and I've already started working on the improvement. So I'm gonna use cursor and show you guys how you can use it. So this is a change that we were able to do in 10 minutes, probably could have done it a lot less because I was explaining it, but basically it was able to add this plus this plus updated our sidebar without any coding. So all we did was just prompt it and we didn't have to write any code. Plus this design was copied, this design was copied and it was able to edit multiple files all within 10 minutes. Yeah, it's pretty impressive. So in Cursor, I got a question asking which model you should use. And I think a lot of people on Twitter have tested and Claude 3.5 Sonnet is the best. So in Cursor, you can also change the model version. If you go to settings and just go to general, you can change the model if you wanted to use these other models. And you can also use your own key and you can add a special prompt for the AI. So if you wanted to only code with one or Python, you can add all this stuff. I have this stuff because I'm coding in Django, and so I just specify it in the settings. So the first key point of cursor is that you can do control command K, and this will bring up this little box up here, which will um, allow you to make changes within the code fast. So basically this little thing here, right? So this brain emoji is up here. What I can do is I can just highlight it and then say, change this to a chart going up the emoji. It runs it and um, it changes it. So you press the set and you can just refresh the page and you will see that this is changed. So that, that's the first thing where you can do inline changes with the code. Now, let's say you want to be able to chat with the code. Here, like we have all the tabs. So let's go to the tabs and chat with it. You highlight all this and then you can press command L. It's probably the same commands on Windows as well, but just double check. But on Mac, it's command L. And basically you can say how many tabs are there. So you can like chat with the code, right? So this is useful, especially if you want to debug your code and ask why it's done a certain way. But if you just want really quick code changes, you can just do highlight it and do command K, which will bring up this thing up here. Let's do a live example of the other feature in cursor, which is multi file changes. So right now, this is a dashboard and this is a new dashboard that I want. And one of the um, things um, on the dashboard is like this daily business ideas component. So what you can do is command I in the file that you want to change. And this will bring up the multi-file editor, right? So you can type, I want the new business ideas component copied to this page. And then you need to specify like where it should get that context. So this code is in the file called components. Let me see F underscore category from at F underscore categories. So you do that. Let me move this keystroke thing so you guys can see like what I'm typing. All right, so I will move it down here so you guys can still see my keystrokes, but you can also see my chat. What you do is like at F underscore categories and this will bring all of the code in this file to this context. So you see this and it will get the code from this file, which has this part here. And then it will edit the, the current file that you want changed. So it's pretty powerful because you can manage multiple files. So let's say you want to take this part from this page and then you have another page that you want to bring into your existing page. Like you can have multi-file context. That's the main power of this command, which is command I. It can provide context for multiple files. After you do that, you just press accept all. If you don't like the changes, you can also reject it or give it more instructions. But typically what I like to do is I just accept it and I will just refresh the page and see how it looks. So 
I typically don't check the code because it just takes too long. Um, yeah, you can see that this is the code that was copied from this file here. It's really useful just to do like copy and paste code or get context from another file that you don't want to manually copy paste. So hopefully I explained that pretty good, but I'll like do another example um, later on in this video. Now let's say we want to bring this component into the new file. So right now this thing tells the user when the data is updated. So again, this is what we do. So we go to the file that we want to update and we just do command I, then we type in bring over the new data in time component from, and you need to give a context of where this code is from. So you have categories and press enter and it will bring this component to our current file. So you just give it a second. All right. And you just press accept all it's saving all of it. And you just refresh this page and let's see where it made the changes. Yeah. So you see it moved it all the way down here. Let's say we want to move this to the top of the page. So you basically you find where it is in the file and say, honestly, just move it manually. Since it's not that much code, copy and paste this and let's move it up to the top of the file. So quick access, just copy paste this here and refresh the page. All right. And the CSS is a bit messed up. All right. Let's place it, paste it here. All right. The CSS is messed up. What you can do is fix this CSS. The UI is messed up. So basically you don't have to worry about your grammar or spelling or even like your sentence structure. Just give it like really simple commands and it will fix it. Just do command R and just refresh the page and see. Yeah. So now it's updated. Also, it's pretty good for UI changes. So just say the UI improve the UI by 10 X or something like that. So it will improve the UI. So yeah, that is com command K, which is probably my most used command in cursor. Yeah, so it changed the UI. Sometimes it, it doesn't give you the best design. So you have to play around with the design, but we're not going to worry about that for the moment. So the other thing that I wanted to go over is just one more example of control L where you're bringing the code to the right hand side of the dashboard in the new dashboard you can see that we have a bunch of these tabs that aren't being properly linked so the tab is already created but it's not linking anywhere so we need to fix that because in the old dashboard like these are being linked properly what we need to do is we just go to our code and we are going to be using the command i the multi-line fix i'm not sure if you need to highlight it or not but you just do that. So if you highlight it, it will actually add it as a context in the code. So basically you can say, uh, I want all the links from at F categories. So this is the, this is the code that we're grabbing it from and create unique SVGs and make sure they are all in the um, sidebar. So you just do that and um, let's see if it is able to do it. So this again is like using multiple files to write code. I think this feature honestly is super underrated. It, they just came out with it, I think two weeks ago, and I've used it a lot and it saves so much time, especially if you are copying code from another file or you need to bring code over or use it as, as example, try out command I, and I think um, you guys will be pretty impressive with it as well. So right now it's just applying all the changes. Sometimes it takes a long time, um, especially if you give it a lot of context. So yeah, it added a bunch of stuff that we did not want. Okay, so this is an example. It added code that we didn't want. So what you do is command Z, which is to revert the changes. And then you need to retype the command. I'm not sure if there is an easier way, but that's kind of what I've been doing, especially if, if it gives you code that you don't want. So you just have to type the whole thing again. So just say, bring over favorites leaderboards and make sure all of the tabs are linking page. So sometimes you just have to be like more specific and clear on the command you give it. It's, this is a second attempt to make this code change. So let's see how it does. Let's refresh this page and see if it completely fixed it or not. It did not add the links, but I think it edited the wrong file. Well, I think it edited the old dashboard. So we just gotta ask it to update the new dashboard. You just press accept all, refresh the page just to make sure that it made the right changes. And um, yeah, so you can see all the new changes here. So once you click on favorites, it brings you to the favorites page. 
Uh, so all the links are working now. Plus it fixed the, the fact that these two links were not in the tab and now they've added it with the SVGs. It did pretty good. So that's the end of the video. I will probably do another follow-up if, if you guys want. So I will see you guys next time.